I'm in the last couple of weeks of finalising my FDRP training with other lawyers in the group and really people from a vast array of backgrounds. It's been very interesting. Uh, I've really learnt a lot about domestic and family violence, conflict, children and their developmental stages, the stages of grief, how to identify and manage risks for clients who may have been exposed to domestic or family violence so as to assist them uh, in the safest possible way to obtain resolution in their parenting and property uh, matters by way of mediation. I've been a mediator since 2014 but this FDRP training has really put another layer on my mediator skills. I think it would be really beneficial for all family lawyers to undertake FDRP, to FDRP training as it helps a lawyer to really reassess whether any of their entrenched ideas held, in particular about such things as whether a person who is bringing up um, DV or family violence, whether it's just used for strategic purposes or a person may be so inflexible that they want X, Y, Z for their child, we might think that they're not child focused, that the other parent is seen as a more child focused parent. But maybe it's a case that their inflexibility is due to being a victim of domestic or family violence and they believe what they're proposing is the only way that they can see to keep their child safe, whether it is realistic or not. Allegation, we may think allegations of sexual or physical abuse are false. The child is being coached by the parent making the allegations. What, the, what do the statistics say? Can lawyers determine this question of fact by looking at their beha um, party's behaviour or their demeanour? Do lawyers have the ability to identify domestic violence or do you only use your instincts? Domestic and family violence we might think is something to be ignored, glossed over as it really can't be believed, it can't be proven. The alleged victim is really just crazy, manipulative. However, victims of domestic and family violence we know usually perform poorly in court. Why is that so? You might tell your clients don't disclose domestic or family violence because it really will be held against you in the court system. So how, getting back to mediation, how do you get the best out of the FDRP mediator and mediation? Well, if you're a lawyer representing a client prior to the FDR, inform the mediator of any risks and the full facts of your client's case, his or her wants and needs. Value the FDR process, not something that just needs to be ticked off prior to filing. Instill confidence in the process with your client prior to the mediation occurring. If it is the mediator's usual practice to conduct an intake session, whether that be face-to-face, -face, Skype or telephone, with your clients prior to the mediation being held, value that meeting as the effectiveness or otherwise of a mediation can often be attributed to how the intake was conducted. Why do I say that? Well, the mediator has the opportunity to build rapport with each of the clients. It takes time, trust and safety for a victim of family violence to reveal their experiences. The mediator knows exactly what each party's interests and needs are. The mediator critically assesses risk factors to determine if it is even suitable to proceed to mediation including recognising the dynamics of power or is there a power imbalance, is there control, so that they can ensure a fair process can unfold if it does go to mediation. The mediator recognises the impact of disclosure on the safety of women and children. There may be repercussions if there is disclosure. These need to be assessed and managed. A mediator can ask intimate questions in a way that's respectful. They can make relevant, safe referrals in ways that will support their clients at this difficult time. They can provide clients with crucial information and that can be provided to both clients. The intake session doesn't only predict domestic or family violence but also prevents it from occurring. It manages and assesses risk. The intake can then alert the mediator to provide a structure to reflect the risk factors. Child inclusive practitioners are also a valuable tool in FDR mediation to assist parents turn their attention to their children and their children's needs. So as a lawyer, how do you best assist your clients at FDR mediation or even at mediation when you are uh, um, attending? All lawyers, including junior lawyers, must learn to take off their adversarial hats and effortlessly step into the role of the non-adversarial advisor, representative and dispute resolution coach. The level of skill and the attitude a lawyer can bring to the mediation can impact on the success and outcome for the client. 
explain to your clients available options to resolve disputes and each of their advantages and disadvantages. Educate the clients about the mediation process and what is expected of each party at mediation. Research has shown that any adversarial approach escalates conflict. So encourage clients to be future focused and to work together to overcome past difficulties. Explain and prepare clients for a non-adversarial mediation. Understand the different models of mediation, the client's legal rights and the legal consequences of any agreement reached. Do you want a facilitative, evaluative or a conciliation type mediation? Do you want a touchy-feely mediator or a strong legal approach mediator or possibly a flexible approach depending on the client's needs, their family situation and their personalities? Prepare clients to participate in an interest-based negotiation by encouraging them to think about their concerns, what issues they would like to discuss, and think about two proposals or options outside of their legal position for each issue they raise. Discuss with your client the negotiation plan, what will be their opening offer, the bottom line, as this will help them to determine their worst and best case scenario and when they will need to and that will also help them to know when they will need to walk away. This will assist the client to remain assertive. Discuss the benefits of reaching agreement. Determining what are the key issues, what are possible causes of conflict and the options. Are they realistic and practical? Really reality test those with the client. The better prepared client before mediation, the better the prospects of resolving the dispute at mediation. Advise your client if they are the softer bargainer not to accept unreasonable proposals and this can balance the power dynamics if the, part, if the other party is the hard bargainer. If your view is different to that of a mediator, speak up, to the, speak up advocate for your client's interests, but do so in a respectful manner. However, be mindful it is a non-adversarial process and approach. My personal style is to have a toolbox full of skills, both touchy-feely, facilitative and evaluative skills, so that I can assist clients who have varying personalities and needs resolve their disputes for the benefit of the whole family moving forward. If you would like to know more information, please go to my website, sydneybarrister.net.au.